Welcome and thank you for joining us at Love Life Christian Fellowship Church with the ministry gifts of Dr. Grace C. Washington, where we preach, provide, and prepare God's people to love life. Continue to listen until the end of this broadcast for information about our weekly services and how to connect with us to become a member. Praise God, praise God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. But how about now? The house of the Lord is coming into your house. It is a blessing to be able to bring this worship service to you live from Love Life Christian Fellowship Church located at 3980 Panthersville Road. I am Reverend Daria Bryant, and on behalf of our illustrious pastor, Reverend Dr. Grace C. Washington, and the first man, Deacon Robert Washington, I welcome you to this worship service. We all know that when the praises go up, the blessings come down, so I ask that you make yourself comfortable and enjoy and experience this awesome worship service. Let us enter into worship with invocation by Minister Carrie Johnson. Good morning. What a beautiful day we have today. And you know what? The only thing I can think of is we just need to praise and give God our glory. Today, my name is Minister Carrie Johnson. I will be taking you to the throne of mercy, right outside in God's nature. Let us bow our head and concentrate on God. Heavenly Father, we praise and we thank you. We come to you this morning, Father, saying you to, for you to bless this service, Father. Bless it in a special way, Father. Father, we pray, Father, that you come into our heart. We know that you're standing at the door and you're knocking, Father. You say, if any man opened up the door, you will come in. Father, we need you to come in and sit with us, Father. We need your Holy Spirit to abide, Father. Bless the one that's going to deliver the word, Father. Open up our ears, Father, and we can hear what thus said the Lord. Father, touch our mouth, Father, that we we will send praises out to you. Father, at this time, Father, we need, Father, to be delivered from the pains of this world. Oh, Father, we need to be delivered from the heartaches of this world. And Father, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. Father, we praise you and thank you. Bless us in a special way. Let us have a good time praising you, Lord. Let us lift up our holy hands and praise you, Lord. Let us clap our hands and give you the glory. Oh, Father, because you've been mighty good to you. You sent your son, Jesus, to die on Calvary for us. Lord, we praise and we thank you for that giver. We praise and we give you the honor and the glory. Have your way in this service, Jesus. Continue to bless us, and we will continue to praise you. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.
the 23rd Psalm. We all know it. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters, and he restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness sake, for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23, King James Version. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word to the doers and the hearers. Amen. Good morning. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 and 7 says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. During the month of September, our wonderful pastor, Dr. Gracie Washington, will be on sabbatical. This is a time for pastor to rest, recharge, and refocus. Love Life Christian Fellowship Church will continue with our weekly Sunday worship services and Wednesday Bible studies. Let us continue to keep Pastor Washington and the First Family in our thoughts and prayers. On behalf of Pastor and Deacon Washington, thank you for your understanding and continued support. Love Life family and friends all over the world. This is Elder Michelle Kitchens coming to you with this week's announcements. Our word for the month is expectation. It is defined as a strong belief that something will happen or be the case in the future. Psalm 62 and 5 tells us, My soul wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. After we surrender everything to God, he promises in his word that he hears everything that we pray to him. He is waiting, ready, and willing to listen to our worries, concerns, and our needs. Prayer is the most intimate time that we can have with God. Please call in at 7.14 p.m. on Mondays and Fridays for seven minutes of prayer and on Wednesday morning prayer at 7.14 a.m. Join us online on Wednesday evenings for Bible study at 7 p.m. Right now, some people may feel helpless, but we are not hopeless. And this hope can be found in studying the Word of God together in the safety of our homes. Don't miss these great teachings. You can dial in at 712-832-8305 with the access code 481-3100-POUND or through Facebook and YouTube. Love Life family and friends, remember your vote is your voice. If you need to register to vote or change your registration information, please visit Georgia's online voter registration system at registertovote.sos.ga.gov. The deadline is October 5th, 
to vote in the November general election. Please, you got to be in it to be a part of it. Yes, many of us are shut in, but that cannot shut us out from voting. Go online sooner rather than later to request an absentee ballot on Georgia's Secretary of State elections page. You must complete the application and submit back to your county registrar. There are also other important details about early voting dates and locations. Remember, if you need any of this information at any time, visit Love Life's website and review the news and events page. And please do share with others. Please tune into Inspirational Spotlight Messages every Tuesday and Thursday at 12 noon. Why Spotlight Messages? Because in all the darkness that we are facing, Jesus wants to remind us that he is still the light of the world. And through his light, the elders and ministers of Love Life Christian Fellowship Church will share beams of encouraging messages to God's people to keep the faith and never lose hope. It is with much excitement that I share with you the next chapter in the 2020 CWC Ladies Life Lab. We will meet every Tuesday at 7 p.m. for a virtual book study. The name of the book is Discerning the Voice of God by Priscilla Shara. Through seven sessions, we will discover the route to clear and daily communication with God through humble obedience. We will learn how... It is with much excitement that I share with you the next chapter in the 2020 CWC Ladies Life Lab. We will meet every Tuesday at 7 p.m. for a virtual book study. The name of the book is Discerning the Voice of God by Priscilla Shirer. Through seven sessions, we will discover the route to clear and daily communication with God through humble obedience. We will learn how surrender unlocks his many blessings intended for us, centers us in his will, and helps us discern his voice in everyday life. To gain the best results from this study, each woman will need to purchase a book. The book can be purchased from Amazon.com, Lifeway.com, or ChristianBooks.com and comes in paperback, Kindle, and Audible. If anyone needs assistance purchasing the book, please contact Paulette Terrell at 404-435-2121. Love life, it's time again. Love life to prepare for our pastor's anniversary. Yes, Thessalonians 5, 12 and 13 says, And now, friends, we ask you to honor those leaders who work so hard for you, who have been given the responsibility of urging and guiding you along in obedience. Overwhelm them with appreciation and love. And because of social distance and not being able to shower them with love in person, we are inviting you to send pictures of appreciation instead. Make a poster, a handmade greeting card, a t-shirt, whatever your mind can design. Submit these photos to Davika Washington Hall at Davika at Hotmail.com. That's D-I-V-I-K-A at Hotmail.com. Please submit them by Sunday, September 27th. Let's have fun creating and celebrating our first couple. I know Pastor and her husband will appreciate it. Love Life, COVID-19 has put a strain on many of us, including our families and our marriages. But we know that there is a deliverance in the power of prayer. The family that prays together stays together. The marriage ministry will be sponsoring One Prayer, a night of unity, on September 25th, 2020 at 7 p.m. We will be jo joining together as married couples to cover each other and our families in prayer as one voice. 
Further information will be sent out via email within the upcoming week concerning this dynamic event. We pray that you will join us as the two becomes one and the one becomes many. Amen. Well, it's birthday time. Yes, yes, yes. Let's give a great big happy birthday to the following. Mother Alice Jones, Mother Ida Shelley, Brother Demetrius Wright, Sister Davia Williams, and Paulette Jones. On the count of three, let's type them a happy birthday. One, two, three. Happy birthday. Yes, yes, yes. Enjoy your special day. And our verse for the month says, My soul, wait thou upon God, for my expectation is from him. This has been our week's announcements. Please govern yourself accordingly. And now back to our service. God bless. Good morning, everyone. We are so glad to have you with us online today. It's time to worship God through giving our tithes and offerings. I want to say thank you for giving. We really appreciate you helping us to change lives. The Bible says that tithing is a reminder that God is the supplier of everything. Praise God. As we give, let us consider Acts chapter 20, verse 35 where it says, and I have been a constant example of how you can help those in need by working hard. You should remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Isn't that something? It is more blessed to receive. So when we give, God counts more blessing to us than if we actually were to receive that very blessing. When we give, we edify others and enhance and grow the kingdom of God. And that is the greatest blessing we could ever receive because Jesus said that when we give, we store up treasure in heaven. So when we give today, believe in your heart that God sees your gift as blessed. He sees you and calls you blessed. Praise the Lord. Thank you again for giving. Let us pray. Lord, today I bring my gift to you in Jesus' name. In your word, you say it is more blessed to give than to receive. So this morning, I bring my gift to you, God, in honor of you. I believe that you are good and true, and I thank you that you bless the work of my hands. Praise the Lord. Amen. There on the screen, you see that you can go to PushPay. Uh, you can give online. It's a mobile giving app that gives you much more user-friendly uh, 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 atmosphere. You can text there to the number on the screen. Uh, start today. If you're not a tither, start today. We want you to be blessed. Amen. Not only can you set up uh, giving, uh, you can set it up to re uh, recurring giving online at PushPay. So we bless the Lord. If you cannot give by mobile, please, you can mail it into the church office. We appreciate you again. God bless you and have a fantastic day.
morning, good morning, good morning, love life guests and friends. Let's go live, let's go live, let's go live. Shout out, shout out, shout outs. Shout outs to my mom and pastor, Dr. Gracie Washington, Deacon Washington. Shout outs to you, to the Titus women, the elders, the ministers, our entire love life family. You're out there virtually. We, I love you, I miss you. Shout outs to my beautiful bride, Angie. Jazz, Jordan, my, my crew, Jazz is back at a and uh, Jordan is doing Howard virtually. Uh, I thank you. God bless you. Let's, let's, let's have prayer now. Eternal God, our Father, Lord, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for yet another day we've not seen before. And Lord, I thank you in advance that somebody will be touched today from this word, Lord, that they'll grow closer to you, Lord. So I, I pray deliverance, Lord. I pray that this word inspires each of us, Lord, to just grow a little closer to you. I thank you. I love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let's get right at it. Let's get right at it. Let's get right at it. Travel with me to a very familiar passage of scripture that is found in the Old Testament. We're going Genesis. We're going Genesis. Genesis, the 32nd chapter, verses 22 through 26. I'll give you time to get there again. We're going Genesis, the 32nd chapter, verses 22 through 26. Let's read those passages together. And it reads, That night Jacob got up and he took his two wives and his two female servants and his 11 sons and he crossed the ford of Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go for it's daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Can I say it one more time for effect? I will not let you go until you bless me. I'd like to use as a subject this morning for our fantastic voyage in God's word, extracted from verse 26 there that we just read. And our subject this morning is simply, I won't let go until you bless me. I won't let go until you bless me. That's ministering to somebody right now. Lord, I won't let go unless you bless me. Lord, I'm going to hold on to your unchanging hand and I won't let go until you bless me. How you feeling? How you feeling? I'm yet holding on, but I'm not going to let go, Lord, until you bless me. Quick flip, quick flip. There is some stuff, my brothers and sisters, that some of us are holding on to that ain't blessing us or the kingdom of God. And we got to learn to hold on to some stuff. And we also have to learn to let some stuff go. There's some stuff that somebody out there is holding on that's blocking your blessings this morning. Your sermon title should actually be, I will let go so you can bless me. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. No, let it go, let it go, let it go. I won't let go, Lord, until you bless me. But Elder, I ain't got nothing left to hold on to right now. What then, Elder? When you get there, my brothers and sisters, just remember Hebrews 10 and 23. It goes a little something like this. We must hold on to God's promises that we have said and we believe and we must never let go. He has promised and he will do it. I won't let go until you bless me. I'm holding on to the promises of God. And y'all know what the Bible teaches us about God's promises in 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. For all the promises of God in him are yea and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Yea and amen. Yea in the original Greek means sure. And amen means firm. Therefore, you can be sure and firm that for his sake of his name, he will fulfill his promises. Yea 
and amen. I won't let go until you bless me. That's what we're talking about. I won't let go until you bless me. Reel them back, Elder, reel them back. Our main characters in our journey this morning are Jacob, Esau, Isaac, Rebecca, and God. I repeat, Jacob, Esau, Isaac, Rebecca, and God. Isaac is the father of Jacob and Esau. Rebecca is Isaac's wife. Jacob and Esau are two sons, and of course, they are brothers. A little more background and context, Elder. Jacob and Esau are actually twin brothers, born, of course, to Isaac and Rebekah. The Bible tells us that they actually struggled together in Rebekah's womb, a, a foreshadowing of a troubled sibling relationship. Esau was born first and therefore became the legal heir to the family birthright, which included, among other things, being an heir to the covenant between God and Abraham. More on the importance of birthright to come. In contrast with Esau, who was a skillful hunter and his father's favorite, Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents and his mother's favorite. So Esau was a father's boy and Jacob was a mama's boy. The storyline, Elder, Jacob had not seen his brother Esau in a very long time. I'm talking 20 plus years, my brothers and sisters. And he was very apprehensive about their meeting again, right? Apprehensive is probably not the right term. He was scared. He was frightened. He was terrified to see his own brother again. Can you believe that? I know you're thinking, you might have some folks that don't want to see the police or the IRS, a, a neighbor that you might have borrowed something from, an ex that you ran into at the mall. You know, but in, in, in most circumstances, you aren't frightened to see your own biological brother or sister. Well, let me break it down to you and tell, me, tell you why Jacob was a bit terrified. You see, Many years earlier, Jacob had tricked his brother out of his birthright and actually stole his blessing. What is the significance of birthright and blessing? I thought you might not ask. Well, here's the deal. The birthright gave him the right to be the spiritual leader of the family, a respected position that was highly honored. The birthright gave him the right to carry the seed of the Messiah and gave him a double portion of inheritance of his father. This is how Jacob tricked Esau out of his birthright. As the boys grew up, Esau became a skillful hunter, and while Jacob became a shepherd dwelling in tents, one day Esau was out hunting, and as he returned from the field, he came upon Jacob, who was boiling some homemade soup. Esau asked for some of the soup because he was hungry. He had been out hunting and in the field. Now, that's a, a pretty simple request, right? I mean, your brother is hungry. You got some soup. You give your brother some soup. So, well, it wasn't that quite easy. So, this is what it looked like. I guess Jacob was like, this is not just regular soup. This is some grandmama's homemade soup. This might even be some Carabas chicken noodle soup, right? He, he literally looks to do business to make a deal and he's doing a dirty deed. He says, check this out. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you some soup for your birthright. Well, Esau responds, what good is a birthright if I'm going to starve to them? You got a deal. So Jacob wrestled from his brother his birthright but he's not even through, y'all. Watch this. He still got some more moves to put on his brother that he hadn't even used yet, right? Listen, watch this. Watch what he does next. Esau, of course, is the father of Jacob, and Esau is old. I mean, he is almost totally blind. Today, he would literally be legally blind, and he's near death. Let me say it again. He is nearly blind, and he's nearing death. He's like... Blind Melagella, I want my daddy's records. Who remembers that old school Sam and Son episode? 
You know, Isaac loves venison, especially the way his son Esau prepares it. So he calls for Esau and asks him to go hunting and then to prepare this savory venison meat from his kill. And then he wants to give him his blessing before he dies. So Esau takes his weapons and heads to the fields and he's hunting. In the meantime, Rebekah, the mother of Esau, and Jacob, she overhears this conversation because remember now, Esau, right, and Jacob, you know, one's a mama's boy, one's a daddy's boy. So now Rebecca is his favorite, it's Jacob. And she wants Jacob to get Esau's blessing. So she comes up with this new wrestling move for Jacob, right? She says, prepare some meat, dress up as Jacob. Watch this, in Esau's garment. So she dresses Jacob up in Esau's garments, and Jacob is going to pretend to be Esau. Remember, daddy's by blind. He's blind, Melodella. And so Jacob wrestles away the blessing from Esau. He now has Esau's birthright and his blessing. Wow. Wow. Because this Esau was planning to kill Jacob. Jacob's mother found out Esau's plan and she arranged to have his father Isaac send Jacob away to live with relatives in a distant land. Now watch this, after all these years have passed, Jacob was returning home and he was afraid that his brother might kill him. Now we understand why Jacob doesn't want to go home. I know in the Wizard of Oz it says that there's no place like home, but what if folks at home are waiting to kill you? That's why he didn't want to go back. So watch this. Jacob came upon the Jabbok River. And crossing it means he's now getting ready to go into Esau's territory. Jacob decided that he would try to appease his brother so that he wouldn't kill him. So he sent gifts across the river before he went. <laughs> he sent his servants ahead with the gifts of Esau, 220 goats, 220 sheep, 30 camels, 40 cows, 10 bulls, 30 donkeys, and two gift cards to Red Lops. Okay, I'm kidding with the two gift cards to Red Lops. I just wanted to make sure that you were paying attention. As Jacob was making these preparations, he said to himself, I will pacify him with these gifts that I'm sending and later when I see him, perhaps he will receive me. Later that evening, he sent his wives and sons across the river. And finally, he sent the rest of his servants with the rest of his possessions across the river. That night, Jacob was all alone by himself on the banks of Jabbok. And that night, the most famous and perhaps bizarre wrestling match to have ever occurred took place. It's not Monday Night Raw. It's not Thursday Night Smackdown. It's not even an MMA match. That night, an unknown, unnamed man appeared and he wrestled with Jacob all through the night. This brings us to the point where we read earlier in Genesis 32. Now that we can place before the red text within its biblical context, we have gained enough perspective, my brothers, to proceed. Five simple questions and we are out of here. They are, who did he wrestle? Why did he wrestle? How did he wrestle? What happened during the wrestling match? And how did wrestling resolve his issue? Can I go on back? Who did he wrestle? Why did he wrestle? How did he wrestle? What happened during the wrestling match? And how did wrestling resolve his issue? Who did he wrestle? I'm going to wait for a second. Who can answer out there in virtual land? Who did he wrestle? He wrestled God. How do we know it was God? Well, this man crippled Jacob with just one touch. Jacob asked the man for a blessing. The stranger wouldn't tell Jacob his name, but he spoke with authority. <laughs> Jacob obviously understood who this was because in verse 30 he said, I have seen God face to face. <laughs> Most biblical scholars believe that the stranger was a theophany. 
God in human form. That night, Jacob wrestled with God. All of us have wrestled with God at times as we struggle to do things our way. We wrestle with God as we try to understand why do bad things happen to good people. We wrestle with God when we call, when we, we struggle with his call on our lives. We wrestle with God with what to do during this pandemic. We wrestle with God when he gives us direction on how to deal with some addictions and some areas of sin and gaps in our lives. We wrestled with God when we could not forgive others and move on. We wrestle with God when we're trying to align our will with God's will. I say we have wrestled with God, but we have taken this approach like Johnny Cochran with God's will and respond that if your will doesn't fit God, then we must acquit. We wrestle with God over the things he's asked us to give up for him. We all wrestle with God so we can learn from these wrestling lessons with Jacob. What are you wrestling with God about right now, my brothers and sisters out there virtually? Is it COVID? Is it stress on your job? Is it finances? Jacob wrestled with God and said, I won't let go until you bless me. What are you going to do, Hammer? Are you going to say the thing, same thing, God? I won't let go until you bless me. What are you saying? Let's follow Jacob's lead. I won't let go until you bless me. Say it with me. I won't let go until you bless me. Why did he wrestle? Because it was a necessary experience. My brothers and sisters, when we wrestle with God as it relates to our attitudes, behaviors, addictions, sins, calling, whatever it is that makes you restless and unsettled, it's a necessary experience to move you towards repentance and growth. Can I say that one more time? Sometimes it's a necessary experience to move you towards repentance and growth. Check this out. Notice that Jacob did not hesitate in this wrestling match. The man approached him and by all indications, the Lord was the one who started it. He provoked the encounter. Sometimes God calls you out. Sometimes your faith will be tested. Have you considered my servant Job? Sometimes God allows you to be tested. Now the question begs is this, why did the Lord want to wrestle Jacob? Well, I don't know if you can completely answer this question, but we do know this, it was something that God wanted to do. We should note that God wants to be actively engaged in our lives, my brothers and sisters. This wrestling match was not only something that God wanted, but it was something that Jacob needed. He had been a schemer. His whole life was marked by getting in trouble and running away. He was selfish and a hustler at times. I think Jacob was tired of running. This was an emotional time for him. He was entering into a repentance period of his life and was finally ready for the accountability of his actions. And it was time to return home. In life, we all have struggles regardless of who we are, whether we are young or old, no matter if we are female or black or white, in this life, you will have struggles. How you deal and respond to said struggles will shape the character and the slope and trajectory of your lives. Can I say that again? How you deal and respond to struggles will shape our character and the trajectory of our lives. In other words, we all have issues in our life that we wrestle with each day. Some of us have to wrestle this morning just to get out of bed. For some of us, it is a struggle each morning with what we're going to eat today. How are we going to survive during these layoffs related to COVID? We wrestle with social distancing. We wrestle with the fear of COVID and its impact. We wrestle with self-esteem issues. We wrestle with self-induced drama. We wrestle with the living with the outcome of bad decisions. We wrestle with making it on our jobs. We wrestle with trying to handle this virtual school thing. Some of us are struggling with health issues. 
Some of us are struggling with the fear of failure. We struggle with right and wrong. Some even struggle whether to go to church at all. Yes, my brothers and sisters, life has and is full of struggle. Although we might not enjoy some of the time, we too have our wrestling matches with God and we need these times. Sometimes we wrestle with God over problems we don't understand. Sometimes we wrestle with God over his will. Sometimes we wrestle with God because of the questions that haunt us. Sometimes we wrestle with God like Jacob because of a deep desire to receive a blessing and to get to the next level of where God is calling you to go and to be. And you know, church, struggles in life did not start with our generation for people have been struggling for a long time. For even the apostle Paul said he had to struggle for, he said, what I do, I do not understand that I will, will to do that I do not and that I hate that I do. Paul said the good he wanted to do that he did not do and the evil that he did not want to do, he found himself doing. Don't you feel like the apostle Paul from time to time? In other words, Paul is saying that sometimes I want to go, but I find myself not going. And sometimes I find myself wanting to stay, but I find myself going. We wrestle at times placing our desires over God's plans for our lives. We wrestle, we wrestle. Church, I do believe we find ourselves struggling the same way today. For there are times when some of us really want to log on to church service or Bible study, but we find ourselves sleeping in. We find ourselves binging on a Sunday morning Netflix and you just got off at 2 a.m. Right. But we wrestle with some things just like you in the mirror. We must learn to lay those things down daily at the feet of Jesus. Paul teaches us in 1 Corinthians 15 and 31 where he writes, I affirm, brethren, by the boasting in you, which I have in Christ Jesus, our Lord, I die daily. I die daily echoes Jesus' command to those who want to follow him. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. WWE, they wrestle, we wrestle. Why did he wrestle? Because God was preparing him to face his issue. Can I say it one more time? Why did he wrestle? Because God was preparing him to face his issue. Now, humble and weakened in himself, Jacob could enter the promised land because he had strong faith. In this passage, Jacob began in the darkness of the night, which is symbolic of his spiritual condition. But after his encounter with God, the sun rose above. He literally passed from darkness to light. God called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. And again, in Colossians 1 and 13, we read, For he, God, has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. We, like Jacob, can pass from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light because the grace of God has opened up the entrance into the promised land of forgiveness and cleansing. <laughs> Will you enter in this morning, my brothers and sisters? You can't enter in your way. You can't enter in your power. You can't enter in this sinful condition. You can only enter if you are willing to be changed by the Holy Spirit. You can't enter in those clothes. Old things are passed away. Your way doesn't work. Admit it. God is sufficient. Believe it. You are a sinner. Confess it. You need a change in your heart. Desire. The promised land is open. And then, my brothers and sisters, you walk in with the swag of God's blessings because you have repented, you've been cleansed, and you're walking into some next level stuff. The problem, of course, is that you cannot be made clean until you come out 
of where you are. And by coming out, is it is inevitable that you be made aware of your sin. For some people, the desire to be set free and transformed is overcome by their desire to cover up their filth and go back. But for others, their desire is to be set free from their filth and sin. And, and their desire is, is to cover up this filth, right? So they step out of the light, fully exposing their filth so they can be transformed. So you've got to ask, I've got to ask God, transform me. I don't want to cover up stuff anymore. I don't want throw rugs with sin underneath them, Lord. I want it to be gone. Open your eyes. Which group are you in this morning? Are you a Christian who is constantly trying to sweep your sins under a rug and hide them? Or have you asked God to get rid of all your throw rugs and you just roll with some hard whip floors and tile throughout your spiritual house? Again, are you full of throw rugs with all kinds of stuff underneath? Mounds and mounds of stuff? Or are you going with wood, floors, perfectly polished, hardwood floors, right? So that you can be transparent, laying prostrate before the Father, saying, Lord, I die daily. Lord, I'm at your feet. Lord, cleanse me. Lord, I am a sinner. You have a repentant spirit, or are you hoarding sin underneath some proverbs, my brothers and sisters? You no longer desire to have rugs to hide your issues. You want a release. Your way doesn't work. Admit it. God is sufficient. Believe it. You're a sinner. Confess it. You need a changed heart. Create in me a clean heart, Lord, and renew a right spirit within me because I ain't going to let go until you bless me. <laughs> We're rolling through this thing. How did he wrestle? He was persistent. How did he wrestle? He was persistent. Don't hold on to the thing you are struggling with. Hold on to God. Can I say it a different way? Stop holding on to the thing that you are struggling with and give that thing to the Lord. Elmer Fudd would say, be very, very careful. Can I add to that phrase? Be careful what you don't pray for. Be careful what you're wrestling with that you're not giving to God. Be careful with what you're wrestling with that's holding you down that you haven't prayed God for, prayed to God for a release, right? If you're not willing to pray your way out of it, then you are enjoying being in it. Put that on a t-shirt. If you are not praying your way out of it, then you are enjoying being in it. If you are not praying your way out of it, then you are enjoying being in it. Philippians 4 and 6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplications, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Jacob had this tremendous issue of going back to the promised land to face a brother whom he thought wanted to kill him. In the midst of struggling with and confronting Esau, he got real with God and held on saying, I'm not going to let you go, God, until you bless me. He wrestled with tenacity and persistence. You see, God wants you to persist, to engage with him, to wrestle him for blessings. Jesus said in Matthew 7, Ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. Is there something you need from God? Then wrestle with him. Strive for this blessing. Don't give up until you get your answer, my brothers and sisters. Babe Ruth once said that it's hard to beat someone who won't give up. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, we've got to be persistent in prayer, persistent in studying his word, persistent in doing ministry, persistent in dying daily and holding on to God until you get your blessing. You see, my brothers and sisters, it's like 
when you're struggling with a bad relationship, you need to get real with God and say, Father, I've gotten myself into a bad relationship. Save me from it. If you're struggling with drugs and alcohol, get real with God and tell him, God, I'm addicted. Lord, take the taste out of my mouth, Lord, and save me from it. If you're struggling with problems on your job, get real with God and say, Father, you said you would never leave me nor forsake me and that you would always be with me even to the end of the age. So if you're struggling with a disobedient child, get real with God. And tell him, Father, you said that you would bless my going out and my coming in. That not only would I be blessed, but my children and my children's children. <laughs> yes, church, we need to get real with God. And we can be blessed in the midst of our struggles if we wrestle with God and say, I ain't going to let you go until you bless me. How did he wrestle? He wrestled alone with God. We see in verse 32 Verses 22 through 24 that Jacob got rid of everything and everybody. He was alone. Now, this could have been a tactic to send a peace offering to his brother. But one revelation is that he needed some personal time with the Lord. Read verse 32. And he rose that night and took his two wives and his two maid servants and his 11 sons. And he crossed the ford of Jabbok. He then sent them over the brook and he sent over what he had. Then Jacob was left alone. In the midst of our struggles, we need to get along with God so that we can pray and hear that small, still voice speaking to us. Church, the problem with so many of us that we always want to be in the midst of a crowd. We, we, we're surrounded by our social media feeds. We're surrounded with all of this stuff and we just haven't still a way to be in just a space with just you and God. Jesus taught when he went off alone to pray, we should not be hypocrites for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corner of the streets and, and that they may be seen by men. But when you pray, go into your room and when you have your closed door Pray to the father who is in a secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. In the midst of your struggles, church, learn to steal away, steal away from the mess and pray secretly to God, the father in heaven, that he will bless you in the midst of your struggles. Come on, come on, let's bring it home. What happened as a result of this wrestling match? Jacob demonstrated his belief in the sufficiency of God by asking him for a blessing. However, God first insisted that Jacob tell him his name. Why? Didn't God already know his name was Jacob? Of course he did. The name Jacob means supplanter, which is one who displaces another deceitfully. And that's exactly what Jacob did by tricking his brother out of both his birthright and his blessing. So by speaking his name, Jacob, he was confessing the true nature of himself. But by speaking his name, he was confessing to God that he had been a sinner against his brother. From this, we learn the principle that God would not bless a person unless they have first confessed their sin. John taught this truth when he wrote, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And the psalmist experienced this truth when he said, then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and he will forgive you uh, and the guilt of your sin. The greatest blessing that God can ever bestow a man or woman is the forgiveness and this cleansing from sin and the blessings that can only be received once this cleansing takes place. Uh, there was a Persian king, uh, Frederick the Great, the Great. He was once touring a Berlin prison. The prisoners fell to their knees before him to proclaim their innocence except for one man who remained silent. Frederick walked over him and he called him and he said, why are you here? The man told him, armed robbery, your majesty, was his reply. And are you guilty? Yes, indeed, your majesty. 
I deserve my punishment. Frederick then summoned the jailer and ordered him, release this guilty wretch at once. I will not have him kept in this prison and he be corrupted by all these fine, innocent people who occupy it, right? You have sinned. God knows you have sinned because only then can he bless you with forgiveness and cleansing. Your way doesn't work. As soon as Jacob spoke his name and therefore confessed his sin, God changed his name. For Hebrews, your name spoke of the character and, and your nature, the state of his heart. By changing Jacob's name, God was showing him that he had changed Jacob's heart. Now we read that his name was changed to Israel because he had struggled with God with men and he had overcome. This overcoming came only when he had confessed his sin and his heart was transformed. It wasn't that Jacob overcame God in a wrestling match so as much that was that he overcame his sin by confessing it and desiring to be changed. We must go beyond merely confessing our sinful heart and desire a changed and transformed heart. In the book of Ezekiel, God promised to change our hearts when he said, I will give you a new heart and he put a new spirit in you. We must change and desire a change in heart the way that David did when he prays, create in me a pure heart and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Like Jacob, we must come to God with a genuine desire, my brothers and sisters, to be transformed because why? He's a name changer. I used to be an alcoholic, but God changed my name. I used to be a crackhead, but God changed my name. I used to be called a bum, but God changed my name. I used to be called a prostitute, but God changed my name. I was once called a failure, but God changed my name. I used to be called a dropout, but God changed my name. The world wants you to keep your old name. Satan wants you to keep your stage name. But God has a new name for you. And because you are a new creature, you are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. The text says that Jacob's new name in Hebrew means heel catcher, deceiver, supplanter. All these names mean negative things. And God cannot use you with all that that's attached to you. He wants to create you anew. So sometimes God has to strip away all that sin from you in order to be able to take you to next level. And there are some people who have been with some bad names and you obtain some negative names in this world. But God said, I want you to forget those names. It is then that God will and has to be done and he has to use you but he oftentimes has to change your name turn to your brother or sister at your house and say God has changed my, my name God has changed my name the text then says that Jacob comes into contact with God one way but he leaves another name or another way he came with one name and he left with another one that suggests that you cannot come into the presence of God and not be changed Many people lie and say that they have been in God's presence, but you don't see any change in their lives. But I stand to tell you this morning, my brothers and sisters, when God has a hold of you and when God changes you, you can never be the same. You are the artist formerly known as. Then the text says that Jacob comes to God healthy and whole, but leaves God with a limp. This limp signifies not anything negative, but it symbolizes that God has cleaned you up. You've got a limp now. And some of us need a limp to remind us who God is and where God has brought us from. That's why Paul says that these thorns in my flesh keep me, keep on hindering me, but they have put me to make you remember that God did it. Jacob became Weaker physically, but he was stronger spiritually. Jacob gained a new name. Somebody say new name. Jacob finally got to go to his home country 
as it turned out, his brother was not angry with him at all. When they reunited, Jacob gained a new walk. He lived from that day forward. It might cost you something, your encounter with God, but you will never, my brothers and sisters, walk the same way again. Can I close? Can I close? How does this all apply to me, Elder? Can what you are holding on to bless you? Does God need you to wrestle with you about something in your life right now? If it concerns something God wants you to do, is it time for you to submit to God? Is there something you need to wrestle with God over, my brothers and sisters? Is there a blessing you're in need of? God's presence, God's power, God's direction. Grab hold to God and don't ever let go. When he left home, he was self-centered and he was turning, returning home willing to share with others. When he left home, he was filled with pride, but when he returned home, he was humble. When he left home, he was accustomed to using people, but when he returned home, he was willing to serve the Lord. His brother Esau met him surrounded by 400 men, but Jacob expected an upraised fist turned into an outstretched set of hands. The two embraced each other and they wept. There are good things in store for those of you who are ready to come home. The door of the church is open. Jacob realized that there's an unspeakable joy when you come home. God is calling you home right now. If you don't know him for the pardon of your sins, salvation can be yours today. Consider this. Jacob would never have found his new if he had not had this personal wrestling match with God. Will you come? Salvation, baptism, membership. If you reach out to us virtually, we will reach out to you. We will walk you through the prayer of salvation. You can be a member of Love Life even if we're not in the physical sanctuary. God, praise God. Have we not been blessed today by this worship service from the praise and worship through to that awesome message? We have been given the fuel that we need to take us through another week. Now I ask that you would go in peace and be blessed and may the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you from this day forward. Amen. And amen. Thank you for joining today's service. Remember, for online giving at Love Life, go to pushpay.com or text Love Life to 77977. You can also mail your tithes and offerings to the address seen at the end of this broadcast. We invite you to join us on any of our Facebook live streaming broadcasts, which include Sunday School at 9 o'clock a.m. Morning worship at 10 o'clock a.m. Wednesday night Bible study at 7 o'clock p.m. Join us at 714 a.m. each Wednesday for corporate prayer by calling 712-832-8305. The access code is 481-3100. 
For more information, please visit our website at www.lovelifecfc.org. Love Life Christian Fellowship Church, where we make people our priority.